Okay, second part of lesson one. What we want to do is take the fundamental uh, counting principle, which allows you to look at groupings of the entire set, and start to modify that a little bit so that we can look at the number of arrangements of subgroups that can be formed from a specific group. And so permutations and combinations will allow us to do that. Now, permutation, permutation that's a formula for calculating the number of unique subgroups that can be formed from a group. Okay. Now, what's important here when I talk about these unique subgroups is that the order in which they're selected is very important. So each one of the subgroup fits into a specific position. If the four are, are, can be mixed up and create the same kind of a group, then that's what we refer to as a combination. Okay, And we need to allow for those um, repeated common uh, arrangements and take those out. So in each, so it, because they're going to fit a certain pattern, a certain position, each one of those is going to be unique. So in the example I've given you, it says subgroups of four from a group of 20, where the members of the subgroup follow an exact order. That also follows with what a permutation does. Now, so we want to find out how many of those subgroups are there going to be within with these parameters. So the definition says N of P of R. Now, N represents the size of the big group. P stands for permutations. R stands for the size of the subgroup. Okay, so those can change depending upon what you're actually trying to do. You know, let's say, for example, you had 24 kids out for basketball and you're trying to find a starting five. So you would say 24 P5 and that would give you, excuse me, that's if you wanted to. Now, that's a combination. I'm sorry. Um, if you were trying to find um Classroom, let's say you have classroom officers. You have a class of 30 kids, and you want to find out how many ways could you choose a president, vice president, and secretary. That would be a permutation. Okay, so you got 30 kids. You got three positions in that subgroup. So 30P3 would be um, the, the term you would use. Now, um, as I said in the last one, you have a calculator that to do the factorial, okay, you, your calculator also has an NPR and an NCR button, okay? Um, again, because of the way that we're doing the teaching here and because of the time constraints, I'm pretty much telling you which ones are permutations and which ones are combinations. I don't want you to mix those up. I want you to see examples of those and work examples of those, but not worry about um, having to worry, you know, having to decide, excuse me, which one is which. Okay. So in this example, then using the, the example from above, you have a 20 P4 and I'm filling in the numbers into that slot. Okay. Into the pot, into the formula. That means we're going to have 20 factorial over 20 minus 4 factorial. So 20 factorial over 16 factorial. When you cancel out the 16 factorial, you're left with 20 times 19 times 18 times 17, and that gives you 116,280. So there are 116,280 different subgroups that you could create from that group of 20. Okay, that's a lot. Okay, um, so that's kind of our goal here is to look at those kinds of situations. Okay, so let's look at worksheet B2 that has permutations on it. And I want to point out just a couple here. Okay, the first one is number two.
Uh, no, question number two, okay, it's similar to the one I just talked about a minute ago. It says four students are to be chosen from a group of 10 to fill the positions of president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary. Say four offices. And how many different ways can this be accomplished? Now, they tried to keep the numbers simpler just by the mere, because um, they didn't anticipate calculator use. But, you know, again, that makes it even easier for us. We just need to set this thing up. So if I know that for four students out of 10, that would be a 10 P4. Again, the first number is your big group size. The second number is your subgroup size. Now, again, you can go to the formula if you want and 10 factorial over 10 minus 4 factorial, or just type it in, okay, and then do your work from there, okay? So ultimately, when you simplify and cancel, this is going to be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, okay, and whatever you get from there, okay? Now, number 3 is a little bit different in that this time you're taking four letters, but we're trying to rearrange all of them. So you could use um, what we just got done talking about in section one and use the fundamental counting principle. Okay. Another thing that you could do is you could also um, use a permutation. But in this case, our total is four permutations, and our subgroup is four, okay? Now, this brings up another kind of interesting uh, fact about factorials. That means if I set it up in the definition, this is four factorial over four minus four factorial, okay? Now, so you got four factorial over zero factorial. And for our purposes, okay, zero factorial is always one. Okay. And so four factorial, which is four times three times two, takes us back to 24 different arrangements that are possible. Okay, so subgroup size can be less than the group. It can be equal to the group. Okay, one and numbers one and four are going to be very much like those. If you look at number five, that should look familiar. That's our cheeseburger problem. Okay, so if you got three pairs of pants and five shirts and two pairs of shoes, again, you know, use that uh, theory that we talked about and multiply those together to find the number of arrangements or outfits that you can make there. Okay, so our last one we'll talk about here on the next video will be on combinations and then there will be some review problems. Okay, and then we'll finish up lesson one.